Thank you all for having me here. Can everybody hear me in the back? Yeah. Perfect. I try to think I have a loud enough voice to echo across the hall a little bit. But uh, again, thank you all for having me. It's a pleasure to make it out here. Yeah, I was actually out in Utah uh, this time last year, but had the uh, privilege of heading over to Bear Lake and spending about a week out there, which was absolutely incredible. But um, this, this lot is equally, uh, equally exciting to be here. Um, so we're not going to try to bore you to death. We're going to take this in kind of two portions and talk first and foremost about what is e-learning, what is online learning, and how does that affect uh, the employees that you guys serve. Um, and then taking that next step and actually doing a practical application, showing you guys the online training platform. Uh, but most importantly, just setting in stone, this is really a value-added service, which means that you said this probably about providing this service at no cost to the members, which means that now you have no excuse whatsoever to go on and actually utilize the programs. So first and foremost, we're going to do a, a little exercise to get, get you guys moving a little bit, get you up and moving around. So can everybody take their pointer finger for me? Just hold up side again. I'm just going to start tapping, just like this. Tapping, tapping. All right, see, everyone's able to do this. You know what that means? You guys have actually just passed the physical examination to utilize this program. <laughs> so, you know, when we talk about getting online and actually leveraging these programs, oftentimes we hear, well, I've got folks that, you know, they're not too tech savvy or they don't use computers all the time. If you can do that, you can utilize these online programs. So, now we've got past the uh, hard part here, we're going to dive in and we're going to talk about what is e learning and what is the use of online training program. So I try to make this uh, not your average PowerPoint page turner, but let's just jump in here first and foremost, introductions. Um, I usually can spend about 45 minutes on this portion, but I'm going to go ahead and try to fly through that. My name is Tony Green, I'm the Director of Account Operations for Local GovU and Praetorian Digital. Uh, Praetorian Digital is our parent company, and Praetorian Digital owns and operates roughly about 27 digital media sites that are really focused on local government and public safety. So how many law enforcement folks do we have in here? Show of hands. None. All right. Uh, are you guys familiar with uh, well, we have sites that we own and operate? PoliceOne.com is one of the uh, the widely revered sites. It traffics about five million unique visitors to the website on a monthly basis. Um, any elected officials, commissioners in here? I know we got a handful. Uh, Efficient Gov is another one of our digital media sites that we use as a platform, not just to drive ideas, but focus on trends within local government, and then we take those resources and build those into our online training program. So we work with about 200 subject matter experts, everyone from risk managers, human resources directors, uh, law enforcement specialists, correction specialists, and everything in between, health and wellness programmers, you name it. Going through that portion of the introduction, again, Local GovU is a Praetorian digital company. We've been working in the pooling sector now for roughly about 12 years strong. Uh, we're also probably, probably tell that since those 12 years, we have, we have maintained a 99.9% .9 retention rate on all the members that we bring on board, which means that I like to think we're doing something right with this platform. But really it goes down to not just working with the polling members that we coordinate our efforts, efforts with, but really working with the, the entities and the employees themselves. Making sure that we can take this program, roll it out in an efficient manner, and give everyone the opportunity to really take advantage of this. So we offer roughly around 300 plus, now that number's a little bit off, uh, we're sitting roughly about 380 online training topics now, ranging everything from safety, human resources, health and wellness, law enforcement corrections, water wastewater treatment, and everything in between. Next, just discussing Praetorian Digital and who is Praetorian Digital. I know we touched on that, that we are the leading provider in public safety and local government specific content. Uh, we continue to really source businesses like Local Gov U and like some of the other companies that we've acquired in the last three or four years to provide and start aiding and really creating this platform concept. So everyone remembers when Amazon.com launched. Amazon.com was really a resource that you could go to and get your books online and just shook up that whole hardcover book industry. Well now, Amazon.com is providing groceries through Whole Foods. Amazon.com is providing online media such as music, uh, movies, you name it. We're trying to embody the same concept underneath Praetorian Digital. So we want to force and then just pull the resources together that really aid the, the members in the verticals that we serve, local governments and public safety. I sometimes forget to change the button. I talk ahead of myself a little bit. But now diving in here, what is online training? So show of hands, anyone can tell me what is online training? 
It's an easy one. It's the process of training online. <laughs> With that being said, uh, we, we got to get you guys going on this one a little bit. Uh, but what online training offers is really that ability to train at the convenience of the employee. So unlike live instructor led sessions like me, right now we're requiring everyone to be in a classroom type setting, online training offers the convenience of really conducting these types of trainings in your own comfortable environment. Whether you're in your own PJs or you're actually in a work setting, you can utilize this program anywhere, anytime, around the clock 24 seven. And at your own pace is a key portion of that that we're gonna discuss a little bit further here. So online training offers also additional components outside of training. Uh, show of hands, who in here is utilizing this uh, the use of online training program currently? Right. By the end of today, we're going to get every other hand to be raised in the game. Uh, but besides the training aspect itself, really what we do is we coordinate with the training coordinators, before, excuse me, uh, HR folks, risk managers, anyone who is involved in a training type role within your entity, you can utilize these programs not just to get in and take the training, but actually roll that program out to your employees. Uh, assign courses, track and document utilization results, and actually track down to the second the amount of time that users spend in the actual training material. So if there ever is an instance where you're having to go back, you're having to pull those records, and you want to enforce that training has been conducted, you are covered. So we always like to use that instance when we're talking about tracking and documentation, if you have that employee and you're looking at their training results and they, they took 15 attempts to pass their sexual harassment training, first and foremost, you want to lock that employee away and never let them enter here or anyone else. But secondary to that, you can utilize that information. You can really leverage and gauge that data to see if there's any underlying issues that are taking shape or taking place. So we put that in front of you to give you that opportunity to really Again, use that pointer finger, click a button, pull that resource and download that on your own workstation or whatever the case may be. Online training uses blended learning methods. So what are blended learning methods? Anyone have an idea? We're going to get this going. All right. Interactive, audio, video components. So it's not just your standard listen, uh, PowerPoint page turner type format. There really is that blended learning approach where it takes in progress check marks, the ability to go in and review various videos, uh, case study type situations, depending on the course. Now it doesn't go without saying that every course is gonna be the highly interactive. Really our goal is to give you the information that you need in that bite-sized format, to grab it, walk away with it, and document that. As adult learners, we don't want to be in a session where we're spending eight hours and you're, you're focused. Because what happens is 30 minutes into that, the eyes start falling, anything else. Which is great why I got in before lunch, because after lunch, I always get that session. It's the one after lunch where everyone's kind of doing that number, falling in the, in the back of their seats. But really, that blended learning approach takes the various learning methods, various learning methodologies. We all like videos. We all spend our time on our cell phones and watching YouTube or uh, the latest video that pops up on the news. Uh, I mean, we have information at our fingertips at all times, and that's how we interact. And that's the same way that we provide this learning service, is the concept to engage in that short format functionality. So spanning beyond that, online training is designed for adult learning styles. So we create what's referred to as the adding method when we're creating these, these training courses. And it's really the methodology that allows us to create and apply best adult learning practices. Again, that includes that short format concept. It also includes the ability to pace yourself through the actual training material. So with that being said, it brings life experience and knowledge to the actual learning environment. So we're using practical use cases. If we're talking about our law enforcement training videos, we're working with law enforcement agencies themselves. We're recording processes that are taking place. We're doing ride-alongs. We're living in the business. Beyond that, it tends to serve tends to prefer self-paced environments. So what happens is we're all in government, and you probably have 20 people in and out of your office on a, on a regular basis, any given day. They're gonna come in, they're gonna bother you, talk to you, whatever the case may be. You get inter interrupted, you have to walk away. That's the best thing about this. You're never going to lose track. You're never gonna lose focus because you can log in and log out at your convenience. It's actually a document right when you leave off. So the next time you log back in, whether it be five minutes, five days, five weeks later, you're going to be able to have that opportunity to pick up right where you left off. Adult learners take pride in and desire recognition. So again, 
working with the subject matter experts that we do, we try to, we try to bring that into that learning experience. So we're, we're using those case study situations. We're using real life examples that have taken shape within local government entities and applying that because you never know when that next incident is going to happen within your local government for that matter. Uh, adult learners want practical problem-centered information. So again, that short format concept, they want the meat and potatoes. They don't want something ongoing. We're not, we're not here to provide that or consider ourselves as uh, the experts in every function that we do, but we want to be able to provide a resource that actually centers around those job functions. So when we talk about spanning beyond just risk management, we're talking about wastewater treatment facility operators. Looking at some of the more job specific functions that take shape and actually problem centered information that they apply on their day to day work or performance. So, what are the top five benefits of online training? Can anyone give me one without looking at the? Uh, I wish I could just move that back. Some of the benefits of online training. Anyone? Convenience. It's always the first one. A couple others? Convenience really does, for the most part, solve it all. Tracking, tracking the documentation piece of it, perfect. So let's take a look and then delve into those just a little bit. So first and foremost, especially when USIP is providing this as a value-added service, it keeps the cost down. Um, anyone have any idea how much you would normally pay to say, let's just travel. We're sending five people to a seminar, a four-hour seminar. What are some of those average costs that you guys have heard? Okay, perfect. You said it's not part of my presentation. <laughs> Uh, but what are some of the costs that you guys incur to, to attend some of your, your training events? Just a, a show of hands on, on average. You mean amounts or what kind of costs are you doing? Well, just the costs in general. I mean, what are you really factoring when, when you consider training costs? Mileage. Okay. Mills. Yeah. The actual registration. Oh, yeah. Their work time. Oh, yeah. And lodging. If you have to oh, yeah. So when you, when you start amounting all of those costs, and that, that's assuming that you're just going somewhere for it. But even when you're bringing folks in, I heard you're taking them off the job. You're pulling them away from their duties to conduct this training. So by a show of hands, do we all, how often are you guys conducting harassment training? Some of the more mandated training topics, slips, trips, and falls, bloodborne pathogens. Is this kind of a common, common thing that takes shape? And, and how are you currently conducting this? Are you pulling people into a, a showroom or a room like this, putting up on a power screen and just going through it as such? And then how are you documenting that? So when you look at the efforts that are involved in pulling all those resources together, just getting everyone there, then you've got the documentation log. Well, then you've got to pass off that documentation log, that sign-in sheet, to have someone manually enter that in a spreadsheet that's going to go into a personnel file. And then three days later, you're finally done putting all these records in place, and you're finally done documenting that, as opposed to having that resource in an on-demand type format that you don't have to pull everyone into. Maybe you conduct that over, over several lunch periods. Uh, maybe you're giving the opportunity to work from home. Yeah, we don't always encourage that because they're not always here. Well, we're never going to pay them double. So it's, uh, we're gonna, we can try to avoid that. But again, that, that access and that, that mindset of convenience and training whenever and wherever. So nowadays, if I look around the room, every single one of us has a tablet and they've got a phone right, there on the, on, right in front of them at all times. I mean, we don't go anywhere without this device. Nowhere. And if we do, we're hurrying back home to hurry up and grab that device and run with it. So what does that mean? You've got accessibility, you've got the information right here in your hands. Now half of that time, cell phones are about as big as laptops nowadays anyways, so you've still got that opportunity to really train whenever and wherever <coughs> it is convenient to do so. So we used to say, and this is about five or six years ago, training was accessible from anywhere with internet access. Well, nowadays, again, we've got unlimited data, so we can pull up information on our phones. So our training is actually designed to be compatible not just in an online format, but with mobile broadband access as well. So it's compatible for computers, it's compatible for those tablet devices, for cell phones, um, and probably the next wave of whatever new technology we decide to come out with in the next five years. But it keeps costs down, it saves that time, the money, and the resources related to either traveling or trying to pull those resources together. Another one is that streamlining reporting and documentation. So we're alleviating those sign-in sheets. We're, we're just doing away with them. But beyond that, we're, we're taking it to the next step. So we're automating that sign-in. We're automating the documentation that the training was conducted, but we're also documenting what they're past pursuing to us. I mean, by a show of hands, again, who here 
when we're conducting those, those classroom type training sessions, are you really testing your personnel? Are you really documenting uh, the test that's taking shape? I'm, I'm, there might be a handful, and good on you if you are. Uh, but that's usually the one key element that is always missing from these types of instructor-led sessions. And so again, our goal is not to say, our training is going to replace every instructor-led training session that, the, that there's ever going to occur, because there is a time and place for that. If we're talking law enforcement, our officers need range time. They need hands-on defensive, defensive tactics training. So we're not saying that this is going to widely replace any and all instructor-led training you're doing, but it's supposed to work in parallel and work in conjunction with some of the other training programs that you're putting in place. Uh, some of those ideas might include new employee orientation, um, disciplinary measures or disciplinary procedures to work an employee through or document any issues that might have uh, risen within their performance, whatever the case may be. Uh, you can use it for really any instance as it applies to your entity. We're going to talk about some of those training programs that are available here shortly, but you know, really, we encourage you guys to think outside the box. And if you struggle thinking outside the box, give us a call to help you think outside the box. Uh, so you guys actually have a dedicated account manager through this program, and his sole purpose is to assist you from start to finish. So that means getting your employees at it, uh, working on how to divvy up course assignments, how to run those reports, how to automate those reports, and really just make that, that, that streamlined process. So really what we do, if we can identify one, two, or three key players within your entity that we can coordinate these efforts with, we're going we're gonna to lift that burden almost entirely off your shoulders. Let us do the work. Let us add your employees. That is truly what we're here for, and that's just another part of this value-added service. So additionally, it is designed to report and track all that good information. We do track down in a second. We do track the amount of attempts that it takes to actually pass a training course. So you do have unlimited attempts. Um, but beyond that, it is truly that documentation log that goes the distance uh, if you ever need to uh, identify or report that information. The customization of content. So Hugh here knows that you guys also have the ability to host your own policy documents, <coughs> apply your own training courses through this program. We didn't know that. Uh, that is a, a part of our system. So we have a custom course builder tool that actually allows you to take your own policy and procedural type documents, load those into that online setting, and then you've got another resource to document and track the utilization of some of your own proprietary information in-house. Moving on here, consistency. So when we conduct these, these sessions, I mean, when you, when you have that instructor that's in there, it's not going to be the same for every employee. It's not going to be the same experience for every employee, because we might miss, we might be short on time. Someone might not show up, and we have to cover something else. So it, you know, you're, you're dealing with a lot of outside factors and risk factors that pull into place that can ultimately change the landscape of that training. So what you're also providing here is the consistency of information for anyone and everyone actually participating in those training programs. The ease of use and access. So it allows your users or accommodates your users in access, access in that training. So again, we talked about access from tablets, computers, and so on, uh, your, your, your mobile devices, whatever the case may be. But it also accommodates the users that you know, may choose that they want to listen to the audio, or they want to turn off the audio, or they want to pace their own program or their own pace to navigate through that training program. So there's a lot of those accommodation factors that allow them to get in, get out of the program at their convenience, when or wherever they want to utilize those programs. All right. So what are, we're going to talk about some considerations for successful train development. Does your current, or what does your current top-notch training program include? Just a, a show of hands. When you're, when you're conducting training within your own entity or your, your training staff, what are some of some of those components that you try to implement in a successful training program? I use fire extinguisher. Okay. Any other components that, that you really want to focus on and you want to identify? I mean, what defines successful training for you guys? Uh, if you attend to a session, what do you walk away with or, or what opportunities that you experience within a training program that really kind of walked you away, your chest is held a little bit higher, you're that much smarter, you're that much more applicable for your job. You got to saw a hand back there. Yeah, you know, even just with that last one we just had, you know, personal experiences, ideas that have happened, uh, that net, net, excuse me, networking sharing is really helpful. Absolutely. That was spot on. You took like three of my slides there, so I appreciate that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it supports professional development. 
Uh, it truly is. It's taking those use cases. So when we talk about the safety training that we provide, uh, nine times out of ten, the safety training or, or anything else that's out there is not going to be local government specific. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a big distinguishing factor between the private world and, and the public world, for that matter. Uh, mostly, and that key term is public. You're under the public eye. You're under the public eye at all times. And there's different applications. So when we talk about uh, OSHA, for instance. Now, now, Utah does have a state-adopted OSHA plan, UOSH. Uh, but there's only really a few specific requirements that apply to the public sector still. You guys are pretty much standalone. There's not always a a whole wealth of resources that are being funneled to public entities. We know that to be stand true for a, uh, quite some time. If we take a look back and step back to uh, anywhere 2007 to 2011, I think everyone can agree with that. Uh, it reduces risk. So one of the big keys of this platform and one of the big components of why USIP really bought into this program is it is designed and tailored to identify those risk trends. So we're a big component that Education is risk mitigation. Around every turn, education is risk mitigation. If you don't consistently put your employees or put that train in front of your employees, the likelihood is there's going to be an increase or you're going to see that steady climb of claim strength. So, I mean, we all say that uh, we know how to, you know, I walk great. Uh, we still have slip strips and falls injuries all the time. I know how to train, I'm healthy as a horse. Sprains and strains is still one of the number one work comp type injuries there are out there. And so it's considering these factors that on my training one, you're not doing that in that practical application setting, so you're reducing that risk already, but truly it's identifying those types of trends. We want to mitigate risk through educational resources. It also reduces that liability exposure. We talked about that sexual harassment, that, that one employee that uh, 15 attempts to take that sexual harassment for. So we focus on those liability type of use cases, those risk management focused use cases, and then provide practical examples of how that could be applied within the workforce. Build and enhance teamwork. Uh, there's a lot of leadership management training courses that are available through here as well. It is not just all general specific risk management content, general specific liability content. There is a lot of called professional development or personal development courses from everything uh, supervisor skills 101 and 201. Uh, defining leadership versus management. So utilize some of the content that's out there. There's a lot of available resources that can assist you in building and enhancing that, that teamwork inside. So, yes, sir. I just want to interject in that. I have, I have department heads that like to still do the uh, group training. Sure. And one good thing about this program is you can have, uh, you can have them complete the course together, and then you can have, uh, we can contact Hope look up you and they will go ahead and assign that credit to each of the users. That's spot on. So that's nice. Anybody hear what Joe said in the back of the room? So we talked about, you know, up to this point that this is really designed for users to get online independently and engage with the program. That being said, we do offer a platform that's called our third party training tracker. So if you are accustomed to utilizing or putting on training sessions in that classroom session, uh, what Joe said is when that training is conducted, you send us that sign in sheet and we're actually going to document all that attendance for you. So even if it's not the single use cases, we still will track and document if that training was held in a classroom session, who was the, uh, who was the person or party responsible for signing off if that was actually conducted, uh, what the attendee times were, what course it was, what dates they were conducted. So even if you don't have the opportunity to get everyone in, I mean, such as um, if we're talking roadway and bridge crews for that matter, or whatever the case may be, those people who are out in the field, they don't always have that convenience factor of getting online or conducting this. So it can and could still be conducted in the classroom session, much like we're doing today, hold that train and conduct that. Yes, ma'am? Could they take, take the test together after? Or yeah, they just, they just do it together. Okay. And it's the, um, whatever test score they end up with, it was the passing score, because again, if they don't pass, they don't get credit. Right. But, uh, whatever the passing score is, usually, usually requires 80% passing, mm -hmm. and then it just assigns, I think it's the same, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's the same percentage You're passing right. gets assigned to everybody. Yep, okay. that's exactly it. Or we can plug it in as intended, so it can be more or less alpha or numeric characters, and so we can put it in a percentage, or excuse me, percentage point, or we can actually document that as attended, whatever the case may be, if you did not conduct that testing component within the classroom session. Yes, sir? Um, what can you assign 
I know it's move at your own pace, but mm -hmm. can you assign time limits to? Absolutely. Yes, we can. Uh, that is generally that's on the program side, uh, but I can I can get in touch with either Marty or, or Johnny or Sonia and uh, kind of discuss that. But we do have the ability to enforce those limitations. Uh, we can do that either per account or by request, and that's usually about a 24-hour turnaround just to activate that. Then that would apply to all training courses. And generally, we enforce those when it's um, you know if there's an accreditation piece assigned to it uh, that we see a lot of that in law enforcement. There is very specific time requirements that must be met for accreditation purposes that we can absolutely enforce those. And we can also choose to do that either by specific course topic or for all course topics on the program. Good question there. Um, it also aligns individuals with your organizational goals and objectives. So we talked about previously the ability to host and document your own policy and procedural documents. So you might decide that you want your employees to go through our sexual harassment training program, but you also want to re-engage or, or nail home the fact that you do have a, an in-house policy that is practical and applied to your organization and your employees only. Uh, that is an opportunity. We can also assist you with that step-by-step. Step. It's very easy. It's very user-friendly, and it supports any and all called file types you would host, whether that's a PDF document, uh, an Excel document, you name it. So we can host that as well. Uh, it also empowers your employees. I mean, naturally, when you are providing not just the the dreaded annual harassment training, or the dreaded annual bloodborne pathogens training. What you're focusing on is there are either job specific functions or focusing on that professional development. So, uh, enhancing leadership, transition from peer to supervisor. There's a lot of resources that really align your organization with that employee empowerment and really focusing that you're providing the resource for them to better themselves both personally and professionally. Include, ugh, improves employee productivity. What do we mean by that? Well, we're not taking them off the job. That's a huge increase in productivity immediately. You're not having to pull them away for two hours, three hours, seven hours, whatever the case it may be. You're keeping them on the job and you're giving them that ability to utilize programs, again, on their own schedule, at their own pace, or whatever you deem it necessary for them to actually utilize and interact with those programs. All right, here comes the fun stuff. All right. So now we're going to take an opportunity. We're going to jump right into the USIP online training program. I just want to check my time, and uh, I tend to talk and talk and talk. So if I don't keep my own tabs on that, you guys will be here for the next three hours. All right. So we're going to jump right in here. I'm going to join the seating table here. Oh yeah. I was told that the uh, the mouse doesn't work too well on this. It's touch screen phone. Okay, okay. That helps. Probably get pop up here. the USIP webpage, so we'll just use this as an opportunity to jump right into where you can find this information uh, on the actual USIP website here. All right, and I've got this. Now I think actually that the link provided does require a login, so we might just skip this here for a second. Yes, sir. Oh, you got it? Beautiful. I tried to get on the website today to make sure I knew exactly where I could find it on there. And, uh, <laughs> perfect. Hey, John, you might have to. This. You have to use the touch screen. <laughs> Okay, so it's under login, member login, right here. 
And uh, the password is uh, uh, Yusuf in all lowercase letters. So, um, Uh, well, it's okay. I can, I can buy that. Can you, can you buy yeah, asset? I can buy That's how you'll get in. You can access all of Usain's training resources under that, that login. So. This is my shortcut here. This is another client uh, kind of cool that programs, but let's just swap this out on the back end here. Okay. So I am right here uh, on the actual portal page itself. So this is what you see when you go and you land on the actual training site itself. So it's going to tell you welcome to the UCIF online training port program portal on this site already. So first and foremost, we already have all the member accounts set up. So if you're not yet participating in this program, simply give us a call. We can confirm what your login access information is. We try to keep that as very streamlined as possible. So we're going to utilize your employee email address if you've got one set up. Um, we're going to assist you with setting up those user passwords just to get them uh, participating in the program. So uh, we're just going to plug in mine here that I had set up. Okay. And then I want to just actually jump back to show you one thing. On this actual uh, the landing page here as well, you're going to see a courses button or view our course list online. You can actually click that button. You can also download that course list. I know that one was included in this packet to show you all the courses that are currently available this year. Um, as we do develop and continue to develop new content, which we develop on average about 50 new courses, and we have to go through about 75 course updates on an annual basis. So we're not only reviewing new training concepts, training trends, but we're also going back through and we're reviewing our existing online content to make sure that it's still up to par. The statistical data is still up to speed, or if there's been any changes in, say, use of force proceeds, we're going to make sure that that information is up to speed and, and up to par for that matter. Uh, on this website, though, or on this portal page, uh, you can select that course list link. Uh, you can scroll through here, and you can see the various categories of service offerings that are available. You can also click on any one of these training course titles, so to speak, and it's going to jump you or throw you right into. Uh, our actual website to give you what that course description looks like, the amount of time in that course, what those learning objectives are. So it is interactive on the online portion. Um, that being said, let's jump right back in here into the train itself and go from there. And I've got about 15 more minutes, so we're going to just break this up in two quick kind of use case examples. We're going to talk about you know how a user interacts with that training material and also those administrative roles and functions that are available to you all as program administrators for your, for your county. So once you log in, it's going to identify you by your first name. It is very straightforward. Click here to see your courses and get started. There's a link that's provided there, and that's going to show you as that end user all the training courses that have actually been assigned to you as a user. So just because all of these courses are available through the program, as an administrator, you have the capability of actually assigning specific course access either by group of employees uh, or for individual employees on an as-needed basis. Additionally, you've got the opportunity to track progress and certificates. This is a test account that I set up for myself, so we're not going to have any data in here, but there are certificates of completions. Once a course is completed and passed, you document that earning. There's a certificate of completion that's available. Again, of course, we've got all the online report and documentation components, but if you do or you are interested in viewing certificates of completion or downloading those for, uh, for personnel files, you've got the ability to do so. We also track this information indefinitely. So you're always gonna have documented training progress where you can go in, run those reports for any set date range, export that in a number of different formats for your various uh, reporting requirements that you have in house, and again, just leverage that information. Um, from another use case scenario though, we can also just update our, our login information, update our passwords, login credentials, whatever the case may be. But really the goal is, for an end user, we want to get them in the system and we want them to take the train that's been made available to them. We don't want to have to teach them how to navigate through the system or really you know, coach them along on every single step they need to make. So we've made this platform very user friendly in the sense that you simply log in, you click the link to access your train and get started, and you're immediately taken to the course 
selection screen where you can select those course topics to kick that off. Um, on the selection screen, you've got the ability to um, kind of filter out what you're interested in. So if I'm only interested in my safety and HR training, I can filter those options down so it's only going to showcase those course subjects that are made available to me. Um, and again, it is as easy with the click of a button to kickstart that training course. So we're going to go ahead and start with Supervisor Skills 101. I find Supervisors that and managers are the backbone of the business, linking upper management to the body of the organization. Let's go back. Effective super we're going to turn that down just a little bit so we don't blow everybody's eardrums and uh, go from there. It's always fun trying to figure out a new, uh, new computer here. Okay. Um, so as you guys can see, a couple things to keep in mind on what just happened there. I can go back here. There we go. Um, you'll notice the moment that I touched that screen, that course started immediately. So what that should tell you is that you're not actually going to have to deal with all of these significant load times. So if you don't have the best internet connection, uh, we host all of our media files, everything that's associated with this training, in our own server. So what that means for you all is that it's not streaming materials from all these different locations that are going to slow down all of the database or your entire database um, county-wide for that matter. It's all built into the system, so there's, it, it just it completely alleviates any of those streaming requirements and restrictions that you might have in place on uh, you know, websites like YouTube.com or any other streaming media site for that matter. Also on the left-hand side of the screen, this is broken down by module menu, and then we've also got that Pace Yourself, the next page, and the navigational buttons on the upper right-hand portion of that screen. Again, we talk about that short format information that's presented on the screen and how users navigate through the training material. There is that audio icon, the, uh, the audio that's associated with the training. As you can see, I just simply turn that audio off if I don't want to step in on my toes. Uh, or you can choose to have that audio live and, and go along with that. And that really is an ADA compliance requirement more than anything else. We have to have the audio uh, applicable in the training material. And it does have to read along with the training material. So working with uh, local government entities and, and on the federal scale, that is just a, a standard requirement, which is why it's built into all the training courses. Navigation is again designed by that pace yourself type training concept. We start with that introduction and overview of the material, so we're just going to do a quick kind of fly through of that. And again, as you can see, each and every page that I click, if we look at that audio bar, it's loaded. It's right there. It's not having to really take the time to load that up. Then you got to listen to it, which can really bog down and uh, take a whole lot of time for that matter, which we're short on to begin with. We also try to put all the information kind of front and center on that screen, so it's going to limit any scrolling requirements to find the additional information that you need. If you get interrupted, again, we got to walk away from it. You can either choose to log out. So remember, I'm on page 5 of 12 here, Supervisor Skills 101 and 201. I might decide that uh, I would made it halfway through that course. I forgot about two weeks later, and then I decide, oh, wait a minute. I forgot, I think I started that training course. When I go back into it, it's going to give me that opportunity to pick up right where I left off or start over from the beginning. So again, you're not going to lose that progress. I don't care if you do this for one course or 50 courses that you make it halfway through. We're going to document that halfway progress on all 50 of those courses. So you will never lose that training progress and they can run in kind of uh, concurrently with one another. As we continue to go through there, on the left hand side of the page is the course modules. So the question came up earlier, for instance, can we limit that time? Can we limit or more or less force the user to go through page by page by page? And the simple answer is yes, we can. Uh, so right now, as, as the administrative role, I do have the ability to go in and I can jump from module to module, case by case. But if we activate what's called a force flow option, it would require all employees to start at that introduction, to go each and every training module up to the summary wrap up of that training exam. And so that's where that applies. But my access right now, since I jump all over the place, is I've got that capability of uh, doing what I want to do here on this program. Uh, when we look at the actual testing components, just to give you another example of what those look like in particular, our goal is not to trick the end user. Our goal is not to surprise them or ask off the wall, odd end type questions. It's really giving them the information that they need to walk away with and testing them on the information that they just went through. So we're not in the business of asking trick questions. It's a situation where they're going to ask, be asked questions that are specifically derived from the material itself. 
When I look at those, uh, those course exams, I'm going to go ahead and proceed to testing here. It is going to document and identify that I am logged in as Tony Green. It identifies the number of questions associated with this and the required pass percentage. One thing to keep in mind about the, the testing and courses themselves, while this might say 10 questions, we have a log in the back end of our system of roughly 15 to 20 questions. So what that means for your end users is they're never going to get the same exam. Uh, we always hear, well, what if I have two users sitting next to each other taking the same course at the same time, they're going to start sharing answers left and right. That's not the case. Because if they did, that's probably why they have 15 uh, uh, failures on that sexual harassment training. Um, but ultimately, it does. It, it requires them, the questions are, are scrambled for that matter, as well as the answers, uh, with the exception of anything that says all of the above for that matter. But once we start that, one additional component to keep in mind, if you're not ha happy or satisfied with an 80% pass percentage, as administrators, you also have that capability of going in and defining if you want that 80%, 85%, all the way up to 100%, especially when we're talking about some of the mandatory training requirements that you put your employees through on a, on a call an annual or biannual basis. So if you needed or required a 100% satisfaction on that, for an administrative component, you can go in with the click of a button and again, as you guys can see here, I'm not, I'm not even using a mouse. I'm, I'm literally using my, my pointer finger to navigate through this training program. So we encourage you guys to get into the site, click buttons. You're not going to break it. I, I assure you that. Um, but navigate through it. Uh, it's also very user-friendly in the sense that you know I can pretty much touch wherever I want on that. Same thing applies with the mouse. I am going to try to fail this. Uh, but if I pass it, then that's not what I'm trying to do. We're just going to go ahead and answer some questions here and see what I get back. So once I finish in grade, yeah, that was terrible. Um, <laughs> this is that employee that you probably need to look and talk to a little bit. But uh, if you notice here, I did not pass. It tells me I, I, I failed this exam. It tells me the score that I, I presented here. It also gives me to see the, the nine questions that I missed. It's not giving me the right answer. It is going to, however, give me the, the answer that I gave or that I provided. So if I was on the fence about something, or I was leaning left or right, whatever the case may be, I can go back and I can review the response that I provided, but it's not going to give me the correct answers. It does require me to go back into the training material. I simply jump back into those module menus, identify where I want to start off, review that material, or I can immediately at that point, if I've made it from scale, from top to bottom through that exam, just choose to test out again. Take it one more time. We're going to document every single one of those attempts, though. So in the last seven minutes I got here, I am just going to jump right into the admin portion. I do like to take a pause though. Anyone have questions about user engagement? Any fears about getting your employees or how you would get your employees to interact with this program? Well, Tommy, it's, it's simple. We just wrapped up harassment training. And we kind of used, you said that 80%, 100%. Mm -hmm. We kind of threatened employees, hey, if you don't take this course, by this date, then you're going to have to take it and pass it 100% instead of 85. Yeah, that was, I was surprised how much response. Sure. The company got to run online training before, not with you guys, right. and didn't have close to that, because I didn't have control over right. that. Well, and that's, that's the one thing that separates this, is it does, you know, it's, it's not your full-scale learning management system solution by any means. This is really a training service to provide training resources, but giving you some of those convenience factors to leverage that LMS concept to be able to assign specific access or you know, follow up and see who has or has not completed the training. So it's not just provide that as an online training resource, but giving you as administrators some of those tools to really interact with that and see who has or has not completed those training requirements. So we're just going to briefly jump right into the, uh, the administrative portion of the system. You'll notice there, if I just go back one page, uh, I've got this admin link that's located, looks like a little person without a face. I did not choose that link, and I don't know who did, but that's the admin link there is, and that's what you got to work with. But um, only those users who are set up as administrators have that admin link to interact with. If I was just a standard user, or set up as a standard user on the account, uh, this would actually be replaced with a dedicated reports link that is specific to that employee access in the training. But if I select that admin link, it's going to take you to the admin site. Uh, it gives you a brief definition of what the tools on the left-hand side of the screen can do for you, starting with users and groups, all the way down to get certificates. And we're just going to kind of fly over some of these functions really quick just due to uh, some time constraints here. 
Users and groups, though, it's one location that allows you to either effectively look up users' training progress. So we're going to throw Marty under the bus here really quick and take a look at, uh, at uh, how often Marty's been utilizing this program so far. <laughs> so if we pull up Marty Stevens here, we can see we've got his information, title, email. We cannot see passwords, so we're not really throwing Marty that far under the bus at this point. But uh, password information, that is something to talk about really quick. Uh, we provide a 64-bit password encryption. More or less what that means in layman's terms is no one's going to hack into this. No one's going to find your password information, even me or even you as a program administrator for your employees. Uh, we do keep that encrypted. We can always go in through and reset passwords, but we can't see what's existing in there, and there's a good reason for that. Um, cybersecurity. I think there was a session on that earlier uh, previously. So if that is a concern of yours or any user data, we also don't store credit card data because that's one that's not necessary for this program. We do not ask for or store any sensitive employee data. So we're not going to ask you for a last four. We're not going to ask you for a full social. We're not going to ask you for birthdays. That is optional. But we're not going to use any sensitive employee data that, that could potentially, somehow, some way, um, be taken advantage of for that matter. So through here as well, we can also assign individual user access. Uh, I mean, if we just add a new employee, conduct a new employee orientation or new hire, we can go and quickly assign them specific access to the training program. We can also look up individual completion results and all certificates for the life of the program. Well done, Marty. Participated good. I was, I was hoping that we had a couple examples to see in here, but also this gives me that opportunity to pull up what those certificate of completions look like. So you can, again, that's one location you can identify and pull that certificate of completion. Um, also, creating those user groups. So we offer you a model that will actually allow you to build out the departments or the user groups that you actually have set up within your entity already. So. There are several locations by doing the due diligence and setting up these user groups by department or by sub-department. So if we're thinking sheriff's office, that could be dispatchers, that could be uh, patrol, that could be jail staff. Uh, you can break not only into groups, but also create those subgroups because that's going to lend itself when you go to start assigning specific course access, which is all conducted through the license manager. You can assign or remove specific courses to users. You can do that specifically by group of users. So again, that's what's most applicable. You probably don't want uh, you know, everyone else utilizing any, any law enforcement content. You, know, you want to keep something more specific to the program itself or to those user groups participating in that program. Uh, but this also gives you that opportunity to do that on a grander scale. Instead of assigning individual access one by one, you simply click a button, you select those courses that are applicable, whether that's all courses or you want to do that individually uh, or select multiple courses as such, that gives you that opportunity to do so. The reports, which is really the bread and butter of the system and really where I'm going to have to leave off in this, um, is we've got courses completed options, we've got courses not completed, course breakdown percentages. You can do that by groups of users. Again, this is one of those locations where if you did the due diligence and you put your employees into specific user groups, it's going to give you that opportunity to run specific reports by group of departments. You can also do that by specific course subjects. So if we listened earlier, uh, they conducted sexual harassment training. Well, if I wanted to quickly see who has all completed my sexual harassment training, I can do that by course and see who's completed. I can also see who has not completed that specific training course. And also those given time frames that you want to document that for. So whether it's the current month that you're in, the current year or between a very specific date range. In the instance here, if you gave them all of Q4 to complete this training, effective January 1st, I'm going to run that course as not completed and see who did not complete that actual training requirement. And then lastly, those export options. How do you want to view that? Can you send, a, can you send an email reminder for the ones that haven't? We have, a, we have a V2 coming up on that, so okay. yeah, we can, we can discuss that. That's, the, uh, that's been one of those big common requests is to be able not just to identify. So the question from here was, is there the ability to remind an employee who has or has not completed the training? That's going to be tied in with our report system. And I think we're effectively about two months away from having that all wrapped up. Yeah, it's in our design phase. So we'll not only be able to identify who has or has not completed training, but it's a, it's a new notification, notification set that we're building out to say notify all employees who has or has not completed whatever training, and you can either customize that, but again, that's probably, I think, two months away from having that built into this portion of the system. 
So folks, I know this was a, a, a fly-through. Um, you know, there's a lot of information that's available through this program. Uh, we certainly encourage you guys to jump in, at least explore some of the resources that are available here. It's offered as a value-added resource, as an opportunity to supplement any of your ongoing training programs that you already have in place. So again, if you have any questions concerning that, you've also got a dedicated account manager. His name is Steve DeStacy. Um, he's been with our team for three years now. He's going to assist you from start to finish in getting this all set up. So if you have concerns about uh, it's going to be too hard for me to get my employees engaged or too hard to get them uploaded into the system, I assure you it is not. And I think anyone in the room here that's already gone through this process can attest that we truly try to facilitate that and make that as seamless as possible. Any other questions right now before we, we close things up? Or, uh... I would maybe show them I like to, to, you know, when the employee receives the hey, where you show that first customer like that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so that, that welcome screen. Um, that is underneath the settings. So that's a great point. I'm glad you said that because we didn't make it to that piece, though. But you do have the opportunity to implement or adjust the welcome screen. So every user, every time that they log in, they're always going to see that welcome screen. It's where they land to then choose to select their courses. So there's a lot of use cases for this. This is in, uh, admittedly, this is probably one of those, those tools that gets often underutilized. Uh, but in the instance that you are, you're wanting to reinforce any specific requirements, uh, such as attention, all employees are required to complete blood, bloodborne pathogens and sexual harassment training. Put that in big bold letters. Let them know the dates that you want that completed by. You can use that as an opportunity to reinforce what you're providing, but you can also apply external training links that are associated with that. So if you've got uh, seminars or a blood drive that's taking place within your, uh, within, your, your, within your community and you want to highlight any other events that might be taking place, that welcome screen is really your purpose and your ability to go in and do so. You can edit those, uh, that odd uh, gentleman in the field with a, uh, with a laptop and put in your own, uh, your own county logo or swap that out. You can also adjust that welcome or that default message. So again, we, we certainly encourage you guys, at the very least, go in there, click some buttons, engage with the actual program. I think you're going to find that it is very user friendly. And uh, let us know how we can help facilitate this program. Thank you, folks. I appreciate all your time. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And for those of you who, you know, they, they, one of the concerns always is, well, I can't force the employees to take the training. I can only tell them that they're supposed to and it's mandatory. But, yeah. <laughs> but certainly the reports are very helpful that if you find that you have certain departments or people who aren't taking the, the uh, training when you ask them to, that you run the report, send it to the department head and let them know that you expect to see that show up on that employee's performance appraisal before it goes through HR. Um, that they did complete their training. Um, so you do, that, that helps create some leverage for you there. Um, so we kind of shift.